Hey guys, welcome to Learn Blender in 2 hours. In this first part, you are going to learn how to navigate in Blender and model the complete scene. In the next video, you will learn how to add materials, do the lighting, add a camera with effects and finally render yourself in nice image. That will be your next wallpaper. My goal with Learn Blender in 2 hours is to make sure you learn Blender's core concepts and tools so that you can get past the first big step of introduction and start creating your own scenes confidently using Blender 3D. If you need help, you can always get in touch with me on Discord. Alright, let's begin. So the first time you open Blender, you will see a welcome screen. And the easy way to get rid of this welcome screen is to click somewhere outside. So I'm going to click here and the screen is gone. Um, so for now, we're actually going to go into settings and do some changes, which are actually going to help us throughout this video. So I'm going to go to edit, I'm going to go to preferences, and I'm going to go to input. And in input tab, I'm going to click emulate numpad. So if you're using a notebook, this is actually going to help you use your keys on your, uh, on your, on your notebook actually. And the next one, emulate three button mouse. This is important. Uh, and then go to navigation. We're going to click orbit around selection. Also click auto depth. Don't worry about these things at the moment because uh, you know, we're going to talk about this later. For now, we need to get started and we want to make sure that you actually uh, finish your first project yourself. All right, so and if you go to key map in here, we're going to click um, search under spacebar action. All right, so this is done as well. Let's go to system. Um, if you have a graphics card, you're going to see CUDA. Click GeForce, whatever graphics card you got. And also check your Intel Core uh, graphics as well. Don't worry about the save and load file paths. We're not going to worry about this at the moment. And let's go to the menu and make sure you save your preferences. Very, very important. If you do not save right now, next time you open Blender again, you're going to have to do all these settings all over. So these settings are very helpful. We're going to talk about this later, as I said before. Uh, but for now, let's begin. So click on the menu and save preferences. Now I'm going to close this window. And what we're going to do is we're going to learn quickly about the navigation, the basic navigation, because I want to teach you navigation as we model. All right. So to rotate in the 3D viewport, you press Alt, Hold and left mouse click. So I'm rotating in my 3D viewport, right? Alt, left mouse click and hold them and then start rotating. So I'm rotating, right? And if I want to pan, I can do shift alt and left mouse button, hold all three buttons and you can actually pan. All right. And if you want to zoom in, very simple, you can just use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Okay, so for now, let's begin um, by understanding how we can delete or add objects because we need to know what object we want to create and depending on that object, we add a primitive, the basic object, right? So for now, I'm going to press Alt and left mouse click to rotate. I'm going to select my camera with left mouse button and I'm going to go to object and I'm going to go and delete. So I'm going to select my light. I'm going to go object and delete. I don't need those. So we're going to start modeling the chair first. Okay. So now you can see my cube is actually in the middle of the grid. I would like to bring my cube above the grid, right? So what I'm going to do, select the cube with left mouse click and select the transformation tool. So this is the move tool here. This is your uh, Z axis, this is your Y axis, and this is your X axis. You can look them here. So I'm going to click and hold, bring it on the top of the grid. All right, so this, this is good. And now I want to start making a table first for the breakfast scene, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come to the third option here after this move tool, move tool. There is a rotate tool. We're going to come to this later. And for now, I need a scale tool. I'm going to click scale and I'm going to click and hold to scale on the Z axis. 
and now I want to scale it uniformly on all the axes here so you can click you can bring your mouse inside the circle left click and hold and that didn't work there's a reason I'll tell you why okay why it's not working hold on I think yeah okay I know what happened so you have to click right inside the circle around here and then stretch it out so if you try to scale on if you, try, if you try to click on one of these axes here it's going to scale for example on the it's going to exclude the x-axis because x-axis is red and it's scaling on the other axis we don't want this so it's uh, green and blue don't worry about this all right don't worry let's not worry about this so I just want to create this along with you so you understand what kind of problems can come in between I just want you to follow ignore the rest you don't need to know anything else all right so I'm gonna bring my mouse left mouse click and hold and drag so this is something I like okay bring it down a little more and so this is good for our table okay so now the thing is if you come up here it says I'm I am in object mode which means I can add objects I can delete objects um, but I would like to start transforming this object to transform or to edit this object I need to go into edit mode right and to go there go to the edit mode you have to click here on object mode and select edit mode okay and now I can actually start selecting these vertices for example so these are vertices the tiny dots that you see so I can manipulate them with my move tool up from here so I can create different shapes or I can do control Z because I don't want this and I can also work with the edges so I can select one edge and start creating a ramp you know or maybe take this edge and move it out but I don't want this so go back I'm just, I'm just showcasing you what can we do and this one is a face select face is actually these different faces around here all right so I can select one of these and move them out move on the y-axis add a tilt or whatever you like so control Z again so now that we know we can select with uh, the vertices the tiny dots here we can work with the edges you know and we can also work with the faces what I want is I would like to have at least four areas divided in such a way so that I can extrude my legs down here correct and for that I would like to have a geometry where this is how everything is divided so I can extrude this part this part this part and this part and I do not worry about this part at all all right so let me quickly erase this and I tell you how we're gonna do that so I'm going to introduce something called edge loops so if you go back into your edge select and you come across one of these edges very close if you press Control R, you can see a yellow edge loop, right? So, if I left click, I guess I get the ability to move it around. And for example, I wanted one edge loop here. Control R, left mouse click, and then move it around. If I like it here, I'm gonna confirm by clicking left click now I also need two here on the side control R for the edge loop click and then right here control R again and left mouse click there you go so I actually have four edge loops now so I'm gonna go to face select and I'm gonna go to the bottom side select this part and I'm going to press E extrude you can see I got the first leg 
but I think if I press Ctrl Z, go back, hold Shift and select all of these uh, faces and if I press E now, I can extrude them all together with exactly the same uh, size, right? So all the legs are the same size for now. Okay, so uh, I think this is looking nice. I'm gonna go a bit down. This is fine. Now a little problem. I'm gonna go back to object mode because I wanna work with the object, not edit the object, right? So let's go back to object mode, select the move tool, and I wanna bring it back again on, on top of the grid. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay, so now that we know how we can create a, a table, it's time we, we create a chair, right? Uh, okay, so I think you probably can try yourself. If you want, you can pause the video or we can go ahead and start creating a chair. Fine. Hmm. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now, we actually gonna go to add and go to mesh and add an, another cube. This is good. Uh, there is also another way to add a, add an object and that there's a shortcut I'm gonna uh, tell you right now. So press, if you go to object, delete this object. And if you press shift A, we can add a, another cube. And bring it up, bring it on the side because that's what we are looking for. And zoom in, select your scale, scale it down because yeah, this is how chairs are. And scale it up a little bit. I think this is enough. Scale on the z-axis a bit. This is looking good. Select your move tool and move up on the z-axis. And then try to see if this is aligning very well. I can still see it's inside the grid, so let's move it a little bit up. Ah, yeah, I, th I think it's okay. Yeah. And I'm, press, I'm pressing Alt and left mouse button to rotate around my selection. So you can see I only rotate around my selection. This is what we did in the settings. Okay, so this is good. Now what we're gonna do, let's d use a different technique. This time to uh, model this chair. So I'm gonna go to edit mode. This is ready to go. And I'm gonna press Control R for, for an edge loop, left mouse click, to make the selection ready and make sure it's in the center. So I'm gonna left mouse click and release. All right, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select my faces. Hold shift and select all of these. I'm gonna press X to delete and what I wanna delete is are the faces. So the faces are gone. I'm gonna go back to object mode and I'm going to show you a modifier. Modifiers are a non-destructive uh, way of modeling which means you can always go back when you model using the modifiers. All right and if you look right here on the right side it says modifier properties. You see a tiny wrench right? Click on it and add a modifier. Now let's select a mirror modifier. It should be around here. Um, ah, here it is. So when I click this, it asks me which side do you want to add a mirror. So I want to have a mirror on the Y side, Y axis, right? Not on the X axis. So I'm going to uncheck this. And you can see there's a little bit of gap. Uh, we'll solve this right now. Don't worry. But anything that I do, uh, for example, any kind of editing that I do on this side, will be automatically reflected on the other side. So this is the best part about this uh, modifier, the mirror modifier, it's very powerful, which means whatever changes we do here, it's going to resemble exactly on the other side. So we are not making any kind of mistakes. And this is very good when we are working with the characters because you need those facial expressions and you need to be very careful when you are modeling. All right, so I'm gonna go to edit mode back in here. The first thing what I wanna do is I want to select all of these guys, hold shift, select, oops, 
here. And before I move this, if you see in under the modifier, there is something called clipping. Clipping means if I bring these two meshes together, they are actually going to clip and merge. Okay, for now we do something like this. And I think uh, we are good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna add another um, edge loop here. Bring it right here. I'm gonna add one edge loop on this end. One edge loop with control R on this end. And I'm gonna go to face select because I wanna select these faces. Now the magic happens, which is if I press E to extrude, I wanna extrude these guys. There you go. So now everything is mirrored, right? And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna select this one, these two faces, press E and extrude here. just to add a little bit of a shape um, what we're gonna do we're actually gonna select the scale tool and resize and scale actually on the x-axis right it's looking nice okay this is very very nice so now I'm gonna go back to object mode and let's see how it looks like Yeah, I think it's looking good. So if I try to bring my chair inside, um, I, I think we need to bring our chair a little bit up. So let's uh, see how we can do this. Okay, so now we actually gonna learn about the views. So I want I, there, there are sometimes when I'm modeling, so I need to be in the front view, the side view, the top view. There are different views in Blender, right? And any 3D software basically. And for now you can see we are in the user perspective view. So if I go to view, and if I go to, um, yeah, view, viewpoint, and I wanna be in the front. This is where I am, so you can see front orthographic. If I go back to view, viewpoint, if I wanna see from the top, there it is. And if you go back in view, and in, under viewpoint, you can see the actual shortcuts here, numpad seven, control numpad seven for the bottom, numpad one for the front, back, control numpad one, and so on. So for now, we're actually gonna use these settings here, uh, sorry, these options here, just to be more precise, and we should be right on, right on the point. So it's easy for you to learn everything here, and then it's always good to learn the shortcuts. So I'm gonna go back to view, viewpoint, and I wanna be in front. So let's go back to edit mode, and what we're gonna do now, I wanna grab so I'm in the vertex select mode. I want to grab all these vertices, which we cannot see on this side, which means we have to go to viewpoint and it should be back. Yeah. I want to select all these vertices. Oops. Select the, the move tool. And I want to select all these vertices just to bring these guys up. But, but now you can see it's pretty tough, right? So I am going and trying to select every single vertex, which is probably not a good idea. You see, I'm spending a lot of time selecting these vertices one by one. So the best part is what we can do is go to view, viewpoint and back. And if you come right here on the right side, it says viewport shading. So if I click on this wireframe um, sphere, everything goes into an x-ray mode right so which means now I can press B to have a box selection so I select all of these vertices by default right go to view viewpoint back left click outside somewhere to deselect press B to bring your box select and then once you have this box select left click and hold and drag to select all these vertices so now I think this is very good we can actually move these guys up but now I made a mistake because I don't want to move these uh, the bottom of the legs right so left click outside press B select these guys here and okay I think this is good all right 
let's go back to object mode and I want to come out of the wireframe mode and for that I want to click this solid viewport shading this is solid and this is x-ray mode this is solid again and this is x-ray mode so we always go back to model in solid mode all right so uh, moving forward what we're going to do is I would like to have three more shares around this table yeah um, so I don't want to model a new chair right away it's better that I can duplicate this chair and distribute this chair around correct so the best part is if I go to the um, the, the viewpoint and go to the top let's uh, take a little bit inside it's looking good what, I, what I'm going to do right now is go to object and duplicate objects and the shortcut is shift D I can click left click on this and now I can move my object around so the first object that I need is here so it's it's sticky by default I'm not holding any any uh, button so I'm gonna bring my chair here and left click to release now I'm gonna use the rotate tool so we're gonna use the rotate tool right now we used move tool we use scale tool and now let's use rotate tool and what I'm going to do is rotate on Z axis. Okay. And no problem if this is not exactly 90 degrees. We're going to learn about this uh, in a while. Okay. No problem. And then let's go back to view. Let's go to viewpoint. And now I want to work with the shortcuts. So the shortcut for top is numpad 7. So if I press 7 on my keyboard, I'm at the top and I'm going to select my move tool and shortcut to uh, duplicate this object is shift D. I'm going to press shift D and move it around and you can see this is pretty quick and shortcut to rotate is R so I'm going to press R and rotate okay so shift D to duplicate left mouse button to release R to rotate and there you go and now I can actually move it inside select this chair and this chair as well okay so there you go we actually have a table and also the chairs now what I don't like about this chairs these chairs is the, the back rest of the chair is pretty small so let's do something let's change all of them at the same time let's increase the size of the back um, side of this chair at once okay so I'm gonna select all of these chairs and go to the edit mode so which means I have the ability to select multiple objects and then I can edit them at the same time so what we're gonna do we're gonna go to the front view press 1 okay let's go to x-ray mode and you can come here to do this box select or you can always press B select the top and select move tool move these guys out and oh by the way sorry I think I, I didn't tell you this so if, if you want to move out of one of these front top views front view or back view you just hold alt and left mouse button and try rotating it's going to bring you back to the 3d viewport again the 3d view actually the user perspective viewport okay uh, let's go back to object mode and I want to go back to my shade view now I think yeah uh, it's, it's looking very very nice perfect okay so now that we know about the navigation uh, we know how to duplicate these objects we know how to go into x-ray mode or the shaded mode we learned about the object mode and edit mode and in edit mode we learned about there are three ways we can manipulate this object with vertex with the edges or with the faces correct um, we know we can get this rotate to with R you see when I press R I can start rotating it's rotating in a weird way I will explain why and then if you press S we get a scale mode right 
and if you press G we get the move tool alright so let's say if I want to move only on the X axis so if I press G and if I press X it's going to constrain this transformation only on the X axis if I press Z at the same time it's going to be Z and if I press Y it's going to fix it on the Y the same is with rotate and scale so for example if I press R to rotate and I just wanted to rotate only on the X axis so I'm gonna press X there you go Y and Z alright so this is how you can animate a fan yeah so if you press escape you can of course go back okay so this is good uh, we also learned that you, you can delete the object by pressing S uh, sorry X or you can always go to object and delete uh, we also learned that you can add add an object by going add add mesh and use a cube there is a cylinder there's a cone a torus um, monkey a blender monkey but yeah so we know uh, these couple of things for now okay so uh, let's move on and now let's learn about um, more objects okay let's start modeling more objects so on, on the breakfast table I would like to have a glass I, I, I just don't want to don't want to model uh, any more chairs no 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 table as well so we actually gonna model a glass so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go to add mesh and I'm gonna have a cylinder I think it's better to create a glass using a cylinder right than a box so we're gonna bring this cylinder up and I'm gonna get closer I'm gonna press S to scale I think this size is fine and I'm going to press S to scale on the Z axis so I'm gonna press Z so let's say this is my glass I'm gonna bring it down on the table right and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to edit mode because I wanna start editing so for the glass what we always need is this top part to be a little bit wider so to give a glass shape right so I'm gonna press S to scale and we give it a shape see so we're gonna have something like this just a bit of shape on the top let's go back to object mode bring this guy up a little and I'm gonna go back to edit mode select down here and if I press S to scale I think this is the shape that I like okay and before we go I would like to delete the top part so what we do we actually press X to delete and faces let's go back to object mode place this glass somewhere down here actually actually here this is good here and what we're gonna do is we actually gonna use another modifier to add a fill to this object you can see right now this is pretty thin the walls are pretty thin and this is not the right way to do it so we're gonna go to add modifier and we're gonna click solidify so we can instantly see when I add solidify I have the ability to increase the thickness of this object so for now I think I like something like this okay so we know how to make a glass and now we are actually gonna learn about making a plate and for the plate we're gonna use the same technique as we used with the glass so let's go back again add mesh and this time I'm adding a cylinder again bring this guy up zoom in and scale on the Z S and press Z bring this guy down actually no uh, let's not bring it down because we're gonna edit this go to edit mode take the top press S to scale and yeah I think this is already very good I'm gonna come and press X here and we want to delete the faces we delete the faces we actually have a plate let's go back to object mode and add the same solidify modifier right on top of this so it, it actually has more thickness right so I'm gonna go to add modifier solidify 
and let's give it a thickness here. Okay. All right, so uh, there is one little confusion and I don't like this. I'm, I'm just placing this um, plate here, so this is good. Uh, you can see I cannot really distinguish uh, or actually I don't have any kind of shadows or some kind of edges that I can see and I try to uh, when I try to align my objects and it looks like very very flat and dull so I want to add some kind of little bit of a simple uh, things that can help me understand this scene more more properly right so what I'm gonna do on the right top side uh, there is some there's a tiny drop down click the click on it right and hmm, click the cavity yes here's the cavity so you can see as soon as as soon as I add, click the cavity I can see the edges right here and at the same time I want to add shadows so these so these are like some uh, shadow lights in the scene and I can play with the rotation of the uh, oh it's, it's not working I can make them dark and flat okay never mind so this is the shadow here I'll just look into this uh, later not a problem so uh, alright so I got something like this and I know where are the crevices and how my shape is actually looking in the end okay so I'm good all right, so the next thing which we want to model is an egg, a whole egg, right? So how can we do that? So the easy way to do it is add a cube. Yes, let's add a cube and I tell you why. I'm going to introduce another modifier. So if you add a cube, let's bring it up right here. And I'm going to introduce a modifier called subdivision surface and you can see instantly everything smoothens out so if we go to edit mode we can see this kind of a box view here and all of these edges and all of the all of these edges are actually subdivided and smooth at the same time to give us the best possible result and if I come in here and click view I can actually add more uh, surface Okay, and I can, sorry, I can subdivide it more and add more surface. That, that is the right word. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this face, move it out a little, and now if I press S and I give it an X shape, so I got the first shape, I'm going to go back to object view, and if I increase the viewport render, you can see I have a sh I have an egg actually a whole egg and I'm gonna press S to scale bring it down and then put it somewhere around my my plate and now for, for the moment you do see all these kind of edges which are not really smooth there's a very easy way to do this right so I'm gonna show you right now how to do that so on the egg if you right click on the egg there is something called shade smooth and shade flat I'm gonna select shade smooth there you go you actually have a very very fine egg that's awesome uh, I'm gonna do the same with the glass and with the plate right click and shade smooth and there you go you hardly see anything uh, we can we're gonna fix this later not a, not a problem and I tell you what's happening here for now our idea is just to model and create all the necessary models that we need for this scene so I want to have one more uh, egg here so I'm gonna press shift D I'm gonna move on the Y axis by pressing Y bring it here R to rotate and I want to rotate on the Z axis only so I rotate like this actually like this and okay I think this looks good all right so let's move forward and this time we're gonna make a half right egg alrighty Okay, so 
all this time you've been seeing that whenever I try to add a new object, it goes right into the middle of the grid. Uh, there's a reason for this. So for now, I'm going to delete this cube, press X and delete this cube. You can see there is a red 3D cursor, right? And whenever you add an object, it takes the same position as a 3D cursor. Now, yes, you can also move the 3D cursor and this is very, very powerful. Let me show you how, how it works. So for example, if I come on top of the plate, this is where I want my half right egg, correct? So I'm gonna hold shift and right click. So hold shift, right click, and you can place this 3D object anywhere in the 3D world. And next time you add an object, it's going to be placed right on the spot. So I'm gonna hold shift, right click once, and you can see it's now right on the plate, which means if I go add mesh, a cube here, it's going to be added exactly where we placed the uh, the 3D object, right? Sorry, the 3D cursor, not the object, I'm sorry. So I don't want this cube because I wanna use another uh, mesh this time to create the, um, the half right egg. So I'm gonna use a plane. I'm gonna bring this plane up a little bit and I'm gonna scale it down and I'm gonna zoom in. So let's say this is what, what I like. I'm gonna go to edit mode and this time I wanna select all of my plane. There's only one face, right? So there is nothing more to select. So one face. And this time we are not going to extrude but we are going to press I for the inset. I is in ink, I is in intelligent, right? So if I press I, I can actually have an ability to inset my uh, edges here. Inset the face, sorry. So because I selected the face. So I wanna make the part for the yolk. So let's say if this is how it is. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm actually going to extrude a little bit press S to scale and this is my yolk, right? Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna go to the top view by pressing seven or you can always go from here, viewpoint in views, viewpoint and top. And I'm gonna select my edges. I'm gonna start moving them just to give it a little bit of a shape of an egg. But you can see I don't have a lot of edges, right? So maybe we need to add more loop cuts. So I'm gonna press Control R, one loop cut here, Control R, left mouse click, and another one to release. And now I can actually press G and I can start giving it a shape like a like an like a half right egg. There you go. I got one. And the same thing goes for the yolk. Press seven, go up. Looks great. And now, edit mode, object mode, we are out here, put it right on top of the, the plate, and right click again and shade smooth. So, hmm, maybe we need to increase the size of the, the yolk here. So, I'm gonna select these guys, hold shift, and select, select these four as well and increase the size bring it to the top all right this is good don't worry about this because once we add the colors in uh, the materials everything will look great all right and i think we should also add some some bread here so we're gonna go back to add mesh and this time I'm actually gonna use cube, all right? So bring this up, scale on the Z axis here by pressing S and Z, and we're gonna create a toast. So if I, actually, let's, yeah, something like this. And now I'm going to introduce another feature in Blender. It's not a feature actually, it's a tool. 
So I'm going to select all of these edges by holding shift, right? So I select all these edges. And what we're going to do here is if I press control B, I can actually start beveling. As, as I bevel, and let's say this is what, I, what I'm looking for, I can use my mouse wheel up and down to add more resolution. You can see, I can add more resolution using my mouse. So let's say this is my toast, and I'm really happy with my toast. So I'm gonna press left click, I like it. I'm gonna select the top and the bottom. Now if I press I to inset, I can have the hard edges of the bread outside, you know, like on, 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 the, on the corners. And yeah, we actually have ourselves a nice bread. So go back to object mode, press S to scale. Uh, maybe this is all right. Something like this. If I go to top view, I can align it here. Bring my egg here on this side. R to rotate. And then if I come down right here, I don't like it's actually going inside my other mesh, so I'm gonna bring it here. Let's scale this down a little bit. And let's add another toast by Shift D and then G to grab and then Z to move and then R and Z to rotate, right? So Okay, I think this is looking very well. Uh, what I would like to add, just three more things, and then I think we're done with the modeling for now, uh, is I wanna add a mat, right? Because you don't wanna uh, make a mess here. So I'm gonna press R, no, sorry, I'm gonna press S to scale on the Y axis, and then S to scale again on the X axis, and then as to scale again on the y-axis a bit more, I think this is good. And for the mat, what we're going to do, we're going to go back to modifier, add solidify, uh, and this is good. Yeah, so which means now we actually have to move all of our stuff a little bit up here. Okay. And finally, what we are looking for is a table lamp. So I'm gonna come, I'm actually gonna go to top view. I want my table lamp to be exactly in the center. So shift left mouse click to bring this 3D cursor in the center of the table. Go to add mesh and add a cone. Bring this cone right here on the top. Actually bring it here maybe, something like this. Scale by pressing S. Go to edit mode and select the face, press X to delete and delete the face here. And if we go back here, we can add another modifier, solidify, so that there is actually some volume inside. Right click and shade smooth. So it's a, like a smooth uh, shape here. And lastly, we should actually add another mesh, which will be so, like you know the the wire for this. Wire for the lamp, something like this. Yeah, bring it out. S to scale down, and then scale on the z-axis to have something like this. Take the both of these guys and bring them up. This is going to be our light source. Okay, now that we, uh, that I think we actually have everything, um, of course we actually can add more stuff. Maybe let's add a, a milk box. So add a cube, S to scale, and then S to scale on the Z axis by pressing Z. I think scale it a little bit more. And then if I go to edit mode, I can extrude this a little bit more, extrude. And I'm going to select 
um, this edges, yeah, all, 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 like all, all of these uh, four vertices, press S and scale on the X axis to bring them closer. So I got a move box here. Go back to the object mode. So you can actually see I'm using different um, meshes. You know, there are a lot of different meshes here in the ad. You can use plane, cube, icosphere, a sphere, a cone, a torus. You can even use some kind of curves. This is where we add the lights. We're gonna use the camera as well, but this will come in the next video where we just talk about how to add materials, add lighting, add some nice effects, and make sure everything looks great. Great. So uh, yeah, I think this is very good to go. Uh, the last thing which we, which I think we should do is probably save this because if you do not save, which I've done right now as a mistake, and I should count this as a mistake because if something happens, Blender crashes, all of my work is gone. All right. So let's save this. If I press, if I go to file, if I click save, and then I can go somewhere. Um, actually, I can create a folder on my desktop. So if I go to desktop, I create a new folder, call it tutorial, press enter, double click, come down here and name your file. So I'm gonna say morning underscore breakfast. Make sure you actually have dot blend here and then save blend file. So now you can see your file says morning breakfast. Okay, so we learned a lot of things here. We learned quite a few modeling stuff. For example, we learned how we can extrude by pressing E, extrude the faces by pressing E. We learned how we can also uh, use the mirror modifier, right? To do half part of the mesh and the other part of the mesh is duplicated automatically, the mirrored, actually. Uh, we also use uh, plane to model the fried egg and the mat and um, yeah uh, for example we used a cube uh, for 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 the actual egg shape so you can see this is how it looks like and once we apply the subdivision surface uh, we see it actually much more smoothened out uh, we also use the Sol solidify modifier um, and I think yeah uh, this is looking great we also learned about the loop tools the, the loop cuts very control R to add more cuts yeah you can always your uh, add more geometry to your to your object okay I think uh, this, this was good and I hope uh, you learned quite a few things here uh, don't worry about if you have actually missed anything because I will be covering in the next lesson and I want to grow uh, and sorry not I want to grow I'm already 30 plus but what I'm saying is I want to go in actually in a, in a very good flow so I'm taking things step by step and I'm missing things on purpose because I want to introduce those things at the right time, at the right point. Okay, so uh, I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Guys, if you like this video, please subscribe and do share with your friends. My idea on this channel is to give you all of my knowledge that I have, and I want to make sure that you guys actually have free premium tutorials. And I'm looking forward to create some good stuff for all the beginners and anybody who wants to learn more about 3D modeling or game dev in general, all right? Alright, so I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Until then, see ya.